Hello, I'm Katie Henderson from GMP Museum and this is From the Archives. Today we'll be having a look at a brief history of women in policing. Women have been helping to enforce the law for much longer than they have been granted the powers of arrest. Originally, it would have fallen to the wives of officers to assist with female prisoners before some forces started trialling the use of dedicated matrons. These were women who were employed by the police as civilian staff. They could be based at a police station or on call and searched and cared for female prisoners as well as accompanying them to court or hospital if necessary. Goulden Street in Manchester was one such station that had matron provision after the 1890s. In the early 20th century, the women's suffrage movement would gain momentum and some of the women campaigning for the right to vote would also be the ones to lead the fight for women in the police service. Groups such as the National Union of Women's Workers petitioned the Manchester Watch Committee, resulting in Manchester employing two female assistants, while Dama Dawson and Nina Boyle, a militant suffragette, set up the Women's Police Volunteers, which would turn into the Women's Police Service after Nina left. The WPS was composed of female volunteers who were named as constables and wore a uniform designed by Dawson, but had no powers of arrest. They patrolled in pairs and were assigned to curb prostitution, keep female refugees from falling victim to sex trafficking and generally work around the laws with women and children. We know that some of the WPS went on to be employed by the Home Office to police women working at munitions factories such as Gretna. Daisy Sharrett, who would later work for Birkenhead and Bolton Police Forces, was one of those women and we have some fascinating items in the collection from her time at Gretna. After the war, the WPS would become the Women's Auxiliary Police Corps. One of the members of the WPS would also be the first to be granted the power of arrest in the UK, Edith Smith of Grantham Police in 1915. The Greater Manchester region would take longer to catch on, with chiefs reluctant at first. That would change in 1921 with the attestation of Clara Walkton to Oldenborough Constabulary, paving the way for the rest of the region. Manchester employed nine women as unofficial police officers in 1921 and later a team of WAPC to serve alongside them, 15 of whom would later transfer into the police women's unit, but would not grant the power of arrest until 1940. In these early days, women were still mostly used around cases involving women and children and had their own separate department and regulations. In Manchester, married women were not allowed to join until 1939. In 1975, the Sex Discrimination Act abolished the police women's department and women were allowed to apply for roles that they had previously been barred from. While not everyone was happy with the disbanding of the department, as some women had prided themselves as being a specialist unit, many others embraced the changes and took on new roles. Women can now be found in all ranks of the police and make up approximately 30% of England and Wales police forces. Hope you've enjoyed this short history. If you've got any comments, please email us at gmpmuseum at gmail.com and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.